northern kingdom of Israel lay devastated by foreign armies, and, and they're coming next for you. Right? So you want to talk about pressure. Your, your economy is on the verge of ruin, and now you're worried about an army coming in and breaking the walls down and coming and taking your family away from you and torturing you, or for worse. Now you want to feel the weight of the world on your shoulders? You talk about responsibility. Well, the prophets like Isaiah came to the people and said, here's what's going to happen. You know why it's going to happen? Because you've turned away from God. It's your own fault for being disobedient to the Lord, for being so focused on yourselves, for, for thinking that you can, you know, everything just rests on you all the time. But the people, willingly, the majority, willingly follow the most godless leaders like Ahaz, like we talked about last week. Right? Ahaz, he actually locked the doors of the temple and he said, I don't want people to worship the Lord. And so Isaiah went to him and was like, you know, God says he, he's, will, he's willing to help you out. You, you don't deserve it, but, but like, you're, here's what you're afraid of. And God, he's going to save you. So just... He's even willing to give you proof. God, in a special case, Ahaz, is willing to save you. He, I'm going, to prove to my, I'm going to prove to you that I, I will rescue you. Just ask me for a sign. Anything you want. Ask for the moon. You can have it. You just have to turn to me for once. And what did Ahaz say? Ah, no. Don't want it. Don't have the time for you, Mr. Prophet of the Lord. I've got some alliances i got to go make. Because what I don't need is for you to tell me about some imaginary God who, if he exists, is so far away. What we need here is military might. i got to go find a bigger, faster, stronger nation to, to, to team up with us so that we've got some, you know, some, some strength to fight again. Because that's, that's the real world, Mr. Religious Prophet Guy. And if anybody's going to help us, you know, we've got to find, you know, who are the gods of the nations that are beating us up? They're the strong gods. If there's any god we're going to worship, it's not going to be a wimpy god. It's going to be whoever is winning. So I'm going to take their altars and put them in this temple of the Lord, and we're going to try worshiping them and just see if maybe that helps a little bit too. And the people follow along. So that sounds, that sounds good. So instead of putting their hope in God, they put their hope in money to buy alliances. Instead of throwing themselves on the mercy of God, they turn to false gods and idols and their own human creativity and resourcefulness. And it begs the question, how well do you, do you think that's going to work out for them? Okay. Well, the answer is probably not as well as that's actually going to work out for you and me. When we think that everything depends on us. The way of the world was literally about to come crashing down on their shoulders. So that's the context in which Isaiah says that despite all this, God, God has a solution. A solution for their problems when the weight of the world is just bearing down on their shoulders. A solution for us too, a solution that, that isn't more money, it's not more allies, it wasn't more time to work things out, it wasn't gonna be more human resourcefulness, it wasn't gonna be some better politicians or a bigger army or better technology or, or anything that human beings think is what we need to stay on top and to figure things out. It was a baby, a child, a son, surprise. Sounds kind of strange, right? But, you know, God's solutions to our greatest problems always seem strange when we stubbornly think it all depends on us. I think sometimes God's just trying to shock us out of our, of our own, of our lack of our own strength, really. A child, a son, 
But of course, this wasn't just going to be some ordinary child. This was going to be a child, though, though fully human, flesh and blood in every way like us. Somebody that would actually live up to all these incredible descriptions that Isaiah talks about. Isaiah describes this child who's going to grow up and be God's solution to all the gloom and the stress and the worry and the fear and the war and the hatred and the conflict and the death of this world. That this child... says would be wonderful counselor. Right? <laughs> Somebody who would know exactly what you're going through. And who would have a message in his word to tell us exactly what we need to hear to comfort us. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God! Right? Somebody who, who, who oversees the galaxies and, and keeps the, the orbits of the planets so they don't all go crashing into each other. Somebody with the power who is in control of the universe to actually be able to work things out in the end. Somebody who could be described as an everlasting father. Right? Because even though he's going to come into this world disguised as flesh and blood, as it were, he himself would be the eternal God who never stops loving and caring for you even when it seems hard to believe. He would be also Prince of Peace. The one who came into this world to end the war. To restore the broken relationship between this world gone off the rails and God himself, our maker. To bring us peace. To be able to have a right relationship with the God of the universe. And so what does Isaiah say? Right after that, here's what he says. Government will be on his shoulders, and of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. You ever feel like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders? You ever feel like this guy? This is a famous sculpture of Atlas, who was, in Greek mythology, a, a titan whose punishment was to perpetually hold up the sky, or as he's depicted here, holding the world on his shoulders. You ever feel like that? I know a, a lot of moms do. A lot of dads do. More and more kids, students do too. A lot of entrepreneurs do, business owners do. A lot of IT people do when the system fails in the middle of the night and you get called and make it all work. You know, a lot of social workers do. A lot of teachers who do. Pastors who do and police officers and Firefighters who do. And I think if we're honest, we all we all do at times, right? When we when we think that everything rests on our shoulders, when we feel this this need to control every facet of every detail of our lives as if it all rests on us, and if we can't move forward and doing something until we have everything figured out ahead of time, all the time, it all rests on us. As if the government of it all was on our shoulders. <laughs> Friends, what would change in your life if today you fully realized that the government doesn't actually rest on your shoulders, but on his? That word, the government, it, it, it kind of fools you a little bit because when we hear government as U.S. citizens as people living in this country or just people on planet Earth. We think about politicians and we think about bureaucracy and we think about all this other stuff, but really the word government is talking about a, a rule, a control, a responsibility for it all. For ultimate things that matter most. He says that the government will be on his shoulders. The rule, the responsibility, the control that's needed. Where does it rest? It does not rest on you or me. 
It rests on him. Isaiah is saying, the government rests on his shoulders, Christ's shoulders. So he's not talking about putting our hope in earthly politicians or any kind of new programs. He's not talking about putting our hope in our own efforts or our own pocketbook or our own resourcefulness. He's saying, put your hope in Christ. Let Jesus Christ be the Lord of your life. Let Christ shoulder the weight of your world. Your shortcomings and your sins, your, your shame, we fall into the same thing over and over again. And if anybody else knew, you go to pieces, right? Your shame and falling short of your own standards, your own goals, your own strategies. You had a plan, you were going to follow it until you didn't. Your shame, much less, you know short of God's standards. You know, Jesus says, okay, I'll, 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 take, I'll take that all on my shoulders. They're broad enough. Your, your guilt, Jesus says, I'll, I'll, I'll take that too. Your worries, your, your fears. Jesus says, okay, bring, bring, bring them to me. There, there's room. Your pain, the emptiness, the insecurity, your suffering, your death, Jesus says, I'll take that too. So Isaiah says, you, you can give it all to Jesus. Because he's the only one qualified to carry it anyway. The one who is the Son of God, our Savior, mighty God, the Prince of Peace. And you know what will happen if you do? Well, the greatness of his government in your life will increase, which means practically to say your peace will increase. Your anxiety will begin to decrease. Your, your forgiveness reservoir will increase. Your bitterness, your resentment, your anger will start to decrease. Your love will increase. Your grudges and your resentment, that will start to fade away. Your generosity will increase. Your worries, your fear, your selfishness will start to melt away. Your faith will increase. Your, your fears will subside. Until you know what happens? Well, until finally you get what you've always wanted anyway. Perfect contentment, perfect happiness, perfect peace. The paradise of eternal life with God, the kingdom that never ends, where finally, one day, every wrong can be made right. The kingdom where finally peace and justice, righteousness will rule forever and for good and for you. Because it's all been bought and paid for in full by Jesus. Signed, sealed, and delivered. By Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter. All that he has done to fulfill all God's promises until the day he makes good on that last, final one to bring you home. So, as you go home today, as you charge into another week, let Christ shoulder the weight of your world. Change your life. Because Jesus still is calling out to this world that's racing around and fretting and he's still saying, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. Rest for your soul. Amen. And may the peace of God that transcends all our human understanding. Guard our hearts and our minds in this broken world until we see him face to face in glory. Amen.